no thought was really given to the health effects, maybe even outside uh, acute effects on workers. I mean, if something was killing someone in a factory, you might slow down the production of it. But once it was out into the environment, there were no laws, there were no regulations, there were no thresholds. And that is largely true today. I mean, one of our toughest talking points, both with reporters and with regular people, they just can't believe these chemicals aren't regulated, but they're not. A lot of these chemicals are post-war creations. So they, they entered commerce uh, you know, in the aftermath of World War II uh, at a time when safety testing requirements just didn't really exist. So these chemicals have been in, uh, in, in consumer products for decades and a lot of them are hormone disrupting chemicals. Uh, they, once they're in our bodies, they mimic estrogen or testosterone and they trigger all of the uh, biological processes that, uh, that hormones trigger. We have found over 200 toxic chemicals in the umbilical cord blood of babies. So you're polluted before you're born. Some of those chemicals were banned 30 years ago and they're still showing up in newborns today. So we have this incredibly disturbing legacy of pollutants that stick around for a long time. They're toxic. They get into our blood. And on top of that, we have a flood of new chemicals and uses of those chemicals in consumer products day in and day out that we're exposed to. It's often overwhelming when you think of 80,000 chemicals out there in commerce and how many are entering every day into our lives. Now, if, if you picture a tanker truck on the road filled with industrial chemicals that haven't been tested for safety, well, picture two of those, or 10, or 100. Picture 1,000 of those. Picture 100,000 of those tanker trucks, or a half a million of them, enough to line all the way from California to New York and back again. That's how many industrial chemicals enter our commerce every single day and most of them have never been tested for safety. Now, that can be overwhelming, and it should be. We need to take action. But for an individual parent, it's important to know that we only have a very small area to defend. Our home, first of all, but even narrower than that. The chemicals get into kids basically in just three ways. It's what goes into their mouth, it's what they breathe, and what goes onto their skin. And if we take charge there, that's the best way that we can protect our own kids.